The doctor who created Bill O'Reilly's new diet says skip the hamburger rolls and pasta salad at your Labor Day cookout. Dr. William Davis is a cardiologist and author of the best-selling book, Wheat Belly, Lose the Wheat, Lose the Weight, and Find Your Path Back to Health. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Happy Labor Day. <laughs> you too. Um, why, in your estimation, is wheat so bad? It's not wheat. It's an 18-inch tall plant created by genetics research in the 60s and 70s. This thing has many new features nobody told you about, such as there's a new protein in this thing called gliadin. We're not talking about gluten, so I'm not addressing the people who have gluten sensitivities and celiac disease. I'm talking about everybody else, because everybody else is susceptible, for instance, to the gliadin protein that is an opiate. This thing binds to the opiate receptors in your brain and in most people stimulates appetite such that you and I consume on average 440 more calories per day, 365 days per year. I bet you you're hungry right now. I'm the, always hungry the, right the, now. The, the, we did just did the bagels <laughs> on the front of the, uh, the book here. Do look, do look appetizing. That said, so it's not, it's not necessarily the wheat. It's, it's, it's the kind of wheat that we're eating. That's right. It's not the wheat that mom had. It's not the wheat that grandma had. It is a very different genetically changed plant. By the way, this all predates the, cha the, the techniques of genetic modification. So these techniques were crude, imprecise, unpredictable, far worse than modern genetic modification. So the stuff we're sold, which no questions asked, is the product of research that occurred before the techniques of gene splicing. So this thing's very different, has many new, uh, unique properties on humans. But the appetite stimulation effect is probably the most standout effect of all. But there are others. Would it be possible to turn back the clock and go back to the old wheat? I mean, is that scientifically possible at this point in time? It's very possible. It's economically unfeasible, probably, because this thing yields about tenfold more per acre. And so we have to ask farmers to do to take a, a loss in effect. We'd have to, to ask agribusiness to revert back to old seeds. They can do it. They probably won't do it. Now we have sparked a movement and we are having a lot of people. They're having record drops in sales because of this, because so many people, I think what's driving this is the tidal wave of change. If three people lost eight pounds, well, big deal. This thing just dies and fizzles, right? But we're seeing hundreds of thousands of people losing 30, 80, 150 pounds, diabetics becoming no longer diabetic, people with arthritis having dramatic relief, people losing their legs swelling, acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome, depression, on and on and on, every day. So here's the question. If, if people want to start eating healthier today, then, and, and they can't afford to go to a specialty store, they can't afford to manufacture their own wheat, what do, what do they start doing right now? Eat real single ingredient foods. Eat avocados, olives, olive oil, meats, uh, uh, olives, uh, uh, vegetables. Mm. In other words, real food. The stuff that is least likely to have been changed by agribusiness. Certainly not grains. So when I say grains, of course, over 90% of all grains we eat are going to be wheat. It's not barley. It's not millet. It's not flax. It's going to be wheat. So it's really a wheat issue. Wheat is, has been the recipient of this extensive set of changes. And yet there are a lot of farmers who, who deal in these grains who would argue otherwise. The Mayo Clinic argues otherwise. They say you need a well-balanced diet and that includes wheat. That's right, because all that literature says, if you replace something bad, white and rich flour products, with something less bad, whole grains, and there's an apparent health benefit, let's eat a whole bunch less bad things. So I take carotin unfiltered cigarettes, replace them with Salem filtered cigarettes, you should smoke Salem's. That is the logic of nutrition. It is a flawed, deeply flawed logic. What if we take the next step and say, let's eliminate all grains, what happens then? Particularly eliminate this modern thing created by genetics research called uh, semi-dwarf wheat. That's when you see not improvements in health, that's when you see transformations in health. You gave me a weird look when I said I had a whole wheat bagel this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're working, so, and you got away with it. I was trying to fire up before the broadcast, but that, generally speaking, even the whole wheat, just to reiterate, you're saying is a bad idea. It's a very bad idea. In fact, I'll say modern wheat is a perfect chronic poison. It causes diabetes, it causes inflammation, it causes heart disease, it causes high blood pressure. Just because whole grains are less harmful than white flour does not make it a good thing. So we've got to use a, a whole new brand of clear logic on this. If we eliminate grains, eliminate wheat really, specifically semi-dwarf, high yield wheat, that's when we see transformations. That when you, that's when you see all the diabetics get rid of their drugs. That's when we see people with rheumatoid arthritis throwing away all their drugs for joint pain. That's where you see high cholesterol going away. You see incredible transformations in health. Food for thought? <laughs> A lot of food for thought. Please avoid the uh, breakfast tray in the green room <laughs> if you would, doctor. Thank you very well, thank much. Thank you.